Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the Funky Marketing Show. One more episode where I'm talking with my friends or people that I consider professionals, people that are, that are doing funky marketing, some things that are, you know, just doing good stuff for the good people or for themselves. And today I have a pleasure to uh, introduce to you uh, one of the guys that I interact a lot over there on, on internet. You probably know him because like he's all the time going in for sustainable growth, sustainable growth. He has this emoji uh, which represents that. And uh, I think I don't see that many people that are, you know, that consistent with the message that they are sending out. And today we're going to debug all of that and get into the details. So um, join me in welcoming uh, Kalim to the show. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Thanks for having me, Namanja. Yeah, always. Uh, how are you? What's up? Hey, man, things are great. Things are great. Um, you know, the world, the world's getting more connected. Uh, and uh, that's really all I can ask for. Because, you know, as we get more connected, we all get more opportunity. So I'm very happy. Yeah, day, day by day, day by day. And, yeah, and yeah. you know what, what I got out of the out of recording this show recently? Um, because I, I decided to go on a different way than most of the hosts uh, are doing. And instead of, you know, inviting and going after the super, superstar speakers, mm -hmm. I decided to go with, with the guys or ladies that I called, you know, friends or that mm -hmm. I interact with. Uh, majority of them has never been on the podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, but they have a lot to share, uh, a lot to talk about, and they are willing, you know, to invest in building the relationship further. And mm -hmm. I think that's that's the best thing that I have done recently, the best change that's over mm -hmm. there. But also, like we are we are uh, talking about changes, we are changing things related to the to the funky marketing website a little bit and everything, uh, and we are going into fully into relationship centric marketing. So. I guess we are in the right spot to of us to talk to talk about these things. Yeah. Oh man, you know, like I'm like I'm in full, 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 full support of that. You know, so let's just let's just start with like why? Why do I like that? You know? Um well there's there's a problem going on in that, you know, as connection accelerates, um we're getting a situation where problems are accelerating as well. Mm -hmm, um, definitely. So, so connection is being amplified, but problems are also being amplified. Um, and uh, uh, our capability, our collective capability is being amplified, but the problems are being amplified, right? So there's a, there's, there's a, there's a match here going on. Um, and, you know, I think that it's very important with regard to the movement building and the category design, which is what I talk about a lot, um, for people to understand, uh, you know, the difference between a functional product or service category and a movement or impact category, right? Those are not the same thing. The, the, the impact category or the movement category, as I like to call it, would be relationship marketing. This is a, uh, a, a, a an umbrella strategic shift, the overarching yes. strategic shift that's going to make uh, everyone's lives better in the community, not just the founders, not just right. So uh, it's impacting the whole ecosystem, and that's where the narrative is based around. It's not just company. That's the macro movement, right? Now you come all the way down in your funnel right to micro market right you went from macro movement relationship marketing down to micro market where you have a, a functional product or service category that you're you're designing uh, an offering and you have a, a a niche an icp that you are want to offer that to right so uh that's why i love it so much you're going to see a lot of people just go with the try to dominate a functional category in the marketplace um a product or service category and i believe that although this obviously has worked for companies in their own self-interest um you know over history as connection accelerates 
uh, the advantage goes to those who are into solving bigger problems um, through collaborative solutions uh, as opposed to using category design as a competitive advantage necessarily, even though that might be a byproduct, a natural byproduct of what's going on. The goal is really macro movement, micro market, um, and to grow the category, not to dominate it, right? So um, that's, a, that's a fundamental difference in, in the philosophy, I think. Yeah, uh, I love the explanation because so many people get lost in those things. And uh, I see that today a lot of people are, sh are, you know, talking about creating the category. That's the only way to go. Or, mm -hmm. you know, like if you don't create the category, then, you know, you're not doing the right thing. Or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, is this for everybody or is mm -hmm. that for certain kind of companies? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's your, what's yeah. your point on that? So the, my, this is the point is like people have it backwards, right? Mm -hmm. They're doing a, at the top of the funnel, they're doing a micro movement. It's not a big strategic shift. It's like a, a moderate strategic shift or a marginal strategic shift, right? And then when they come to the bottom, they go macro market. It's, it should be flipped, right? Uh, this is what a funnel. So I, I honestly, I wasn't using funnel metaphors uh, until I recently found this version to, to be quite useful in my mind, um, uh, because because it's really about funneling to impactful relationships, which is the ecosystem. Your employ, your team members, your customers, your collaborators, your your audience. Right? There's a whole spectrum of what's going on here. Um, but that is the fundamental thing is companies right now, you hear Seth Godin's talk about this. It's a micro market world, right? But it's a macro movement world, mm -hmm. right? It's a macro movement world and a micro market world. And people are the things getting flipped around in their mind. And the problem is it's hard to identify this as a, as a strategy, unless you're coming from a, a, a good place in your intent. Mm -hmm. You know, are you really, do you intend to serve? Do you tend to create impact? Is that really your intent? And this starts to become more obvious, I think. But if you're caught in the VC, get it, we need our money, blah, 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 too much. You probably not, you're probably not going to think of this, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I can see a couple, couple of things here. Uh, you know, what is your intent becomes really obvious when, you know, I talk with a person. You know, mm. if you go into one-on-one -on -one conversations, the intent becomes real obvious. I can, I can get it to the one-on-one -on -one relationship so we can uh, explain it like more mm. simpler. But, yeah. you know, if you uh, have at least in back in your mi mind that you want to sell me something right away, mm. yeah, I, I will see it. I will see the intent <laughs> in the way you structure the sentence. Exactly. Or, or, exactly. or, or whatever. If yeah. you don't, I'll see that as well. Uh, yeah. and, you know, uh, and talking about VC and how you, uh, you think about those things, like we, we work with a lot of seed stage startups yeah. and they have this, let's call yeah. it the dilemma when, you know, they need a VC money to kind of, uh, mm -hmm. accelerate the growth and to make things happen faster. But mm -hmm. on the other hand, they want to get you know, to do the right things and get the right customers and uh, get the right foundation for the further growth. And yeah. then those those two things, they clash between each other. Yeah. And, and, you know, like the, the, the simplest example, like uh, sometimes the only the only thing that, uh, you know, that the startup can offer is like we have really um, good traffic on the website. Okay. Conversions are, sti are still bad, but we have the traffic. So they said, yeah. okay, yeah, that's good. We'll, we'll get the, the percentage of the conversions up in time. But then when this happens, the metrics that they stick to for the first time, it's the traffic. It's going down because you don't need that much traffic. You need the right one. Mm -hmm. Conversions are going up, but they're like, 
okay, one metric is going up, but the other one is going down. So, so you are not on the right path. And it's, yeah. it can make you crazy. You know, especially if you are the founder, you need, you know, you have employees, you need to, to actually, you know, give them salaries. On the other hand, you have the VC and it's becoming incredibly hard to, to function and to operate. Yes. Yes, man. That is, that is the, that is the central conflict. That is the central core conflict um, is, you know, the self-serving shareholder is poses the biggest threat to sustainable growth. So who you take money from is possibly the most important decision you can make in the entire business. Yes. Um, is that person, um, there's a few things to consider, right? For me, I don't want money from people who aren't coming in to give some sort of unique capability to serve the community and the customer, right? And the team. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't want cash. I would wanna, I wanna avoid cash without capability, right? <laughs> so, because when you take cash without capability, they want to, they want it all back from you, but the cash doesn't necessarily produce more cash always, mm -hmm. but the capability, if it's the right capability, it will produce more cash sustainably. Right. So, um, yeah, I think, I think that from now on, I see my initial kind of investors, um, like they don't own equity of my business, but, uh, they're, my capability partners and we will pay each other later on. You, you understand in a sense, we're trading capability right now to serve the same type of client. That's what we want to do. Um, but yeah, I think that the beginning of businesses nowadays with this acceleration and connectivity is different. Um, you, you have more options than you think. Um, I think a lot of people have been kind of brainwashed into thinking that like, there's this like, you know, series A, B, C, D, E, go to these, you know, set of venture capital firms, right? Um, and that's the only way you can, you know, make a, a business that, you know, grows, right? Yes. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's the big lie. You know, that's the big lie is like, yeah, if you want to go hyper growth, super speed, sure like then you need to get a bunch of money and go hyper growth super speed, right? But if you're willing to put in three to five years of solid of solid work and you have you have a way to pay your bills, right? Why, why, like, why are we, why are we gonna play that game, you know? So. Yeah, and, and I'm always getting back to the, to the drift example, like they build a community. I mean, yeah. they, 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 they are lucky they're based in Boston, okay? So there's a tons of companies, investors, whatever over there. It's a huge tech city. So mm -hmm. it's a huge city overall, but yeah. you know, like inviting them for dinners, organizing mm -hmm. small dinners for, uh, you know, company owners, business, business owners, investors, and, you know, and just listening to them mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, you know, they had time to go and do that. And mm -hmm. then they come with, with a couple of things, yeah. couple of ketchups, you know, like, uh, the story that I know of Drift is they, you know, they talk with product people and they understood that product people are, are pissed off because nobody understands what they're doing. I mean, mm. it, it relates to this day. Interesting. And, wow. and, you know, and they decided, okay, we're going to create a community around them, let them talk, and then we'll come up with one product after the other. And, you know, and then they go. extend it, then they, are, they have the Latin background. There's a lots of things going on over there. Then they invented, mm -hmm. invented, I mean, I don't know if they invented the category, but you know, conversational marketing, conversational yeah. AI. I was reading that the other day that like, that was conversational AI was the bu marketing bullshit, but it was done perfectly and it worked really well. So <laughs> that, that's also something, something to say. Uh, and. You know what was what was great for me about it is that mm. they they knew how to give additional value. Like mm. we here in Serbia, we bought bought conversational marketing book. Yeah. They shipped it to Serbia. We got it, and two weeks later, we got another book for free for them. Small yeah. little books called "It Won't Scale." When they mm. mentioned forty things 
that they have done to create a hyper growth company. And mm. I think that's that's the book that changed the way I look at uh, at the things, even even up to this day. Mm. And, and they shipped it for free to Serbia. Yeah, yeah. And and so I think when you mention all of this, like I just think like things aren't like I'm an idealist, right? Things aren't black and white in the world, but it's my job to be an idealist, right? But you know what I'm noticing with these companies is like people don't really mention the really good things that they, a lot of the really good things they did. They usually focus on some aspect uh, of the growth and do an attribution of some sort on like, this is why they became a unicorn or whatever. Right. And they, they leave out a a lot of the story. Right. So for example, Mm -hmm. um, you know, terminus, right. That's my friend Sangram. But for example, mm-hmm. Terminus doesn't talk as much about the community building and the category design, right? They talk more about like ABM and now GTM, right? But community building and category design got them there, right? No, ABM contributed to that, right? But we're mm-hmm. doing an attribution again of some sort, right? So um, I, I think that what I my job is to look at these companies and point out like what is it that they're doing well like hubspot for example um hubspot you just pointed out a whole bunch of things that they do really well and that's like the formation you're talking about then there's the back end which is how they actually scaled and they didn't scale through you know massive customer acquisition efforts they scaled by providing layering on multiplying value to their ideal client and then the pr and all of the stuff from that created the acquisition, you know? So um, you can look at their revenue curve. You go look at their revenue curve and the explosive period, it's just layered on value after layered on value after layered on value, right? Um, and now they've layered on even more value. They're doing the payments thing now. So mm-hmm. they've gone all the way from uh, inbound marketing software, layering on, you know, uh, sa- sales, uh, uh, customer success operations, rev ops, right? And now they have payments. So um, that's how you build billion dollar companies is you layer on the value for the ideal client. Um, that's how you scale. Exactly. Uh, so tell me, let's go into a little bit, uh, you know, and get into the details the way you actually do uh, things for the companies. So. Mm-hmm. Sustainable growth, we're here, but how to establish that through, you know, GTM partnerships? Yeah. So, so you, you just pointed out, uh, uh, I call it rush to market, rush to market. And you, you just pointed out, no, we should go to community staggered first. So we get this information and we know the people, we know future customers, we have uh, some level of problem market fit and product market fit before even like spending lots of money and doing a lot of stuff. Um, so just that kind of sets the stage as to what, why we're actually here, right? It is because companies aren't doing that go to community relationship building, uh, uh, process. Um, and they're just rushing to market. So, but look, okay, this sounds all great. You know, go to community, uh, drive a movement, uh, macro, mac- macro movement, micro market, all true, but like, oh, but where do I start? Like, how do I even get started on this? You know? Um, and the first thing is there's the purpose that you have to pre- get pretty clear on, uh, at the beginning, you can't like wait too long to understand purpose. Um, and from purpose, you're going to figure out, uh, narrative category and community in a, in a cyclical cycle. I've drawn it out for people, but um, you really want to start with narrative and category and why. Um, so what the way that I like to do it is I like to break it down into two narratives. I have the movement mm-hmm. narrative and I have the functional narrative, right? So this will evolve as you community build, but you need to start somewhere. 
You need to go out there and say, give your point of view and start giving off this resonance, right? So um, the first the first thing is that the, the movement narrative is going to come from communal purpose, mm -hmm. right? If things change, if things change from X to Y at scale in terms of behavior, uh, uh, what else changes in the world, right? Um, so figure out like at scale in the community, if we have a behavioral change from X to Y, what is the big outcome that, that, that happens, right? That's how you're going to find the movement narrative, okay? When you come down, you might already have a product or service you're offering right now. So it's going to be easier to identify the product or service category. The key is that you're connecting those two things, right, at the beginning. You're saying that we have this, uh, you know, product or service uh, that is for a niche, ICP. We might not be totally clear on what that is right now. Yeah, because it it's changes and it evolves. Yeah, exactly. But we know that this product or service contributes to this bigger macro movement, right? So there you need to, you need to set a starting point for that to start doing your community building. That narrative will evolve through the community building, right? Now, when we talk about community building, it's like, well, where do I start community building? Okay, I know the movement, I know the purpose, you know, the movement, and I know the product category, but, but how do I start community building, right? Um, well, this is where you have to create what I like to call a relationship orbit, a relationship orbit. All, all, all of the people who know, really know what they're doing are doing this, okay? We're doing it right now. And uh, a relationship orbit is a, 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 a cyclical... Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 like, I like the name. It tells you right away what it is. Yes, a cyclical path that everyone takes uh, uh, around that bigger communal purpose that, that you're advocating for, right? So what's happening is that by upgrading the level of that purpose and, and designing a movement category, not just a functional product category, you are now making your community building far easier because you're attracting people based on purpose and values at the top of the funnel, as opposed to just functional information or things that maybe they could find somewhere else, right? Uh, you're, you're saying this, we start with, do we actually care about the same stuff? Do we value the same things? with regard to, to this subject, you yes. know, because people will, people will convert all types of customers and they find out like the person doesn't even value the same things as them. It's like, no, I actually don't really care that much about brand. It's like, well, we should have figured that out before you became a customer. Right. Um, <laughs> so the exactly. relationship orbit, the, 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 there's many ways to do it. I would say that the, the, the best format is uh, the internet talk show or the podcast one of these two formats we're doing live. Um, this is more of a podcast format. The more interaction you have, the more it becomes like a, a talk show, right? Um, exactly. So it, it, it reminds me, sorry to, uh, to interrupt you, like no. I'm listening to you and one company that comes to my mind, like that I'm seeing recently is, uh, you recall uh, Conversion AI, now they are Jarvis building uh, a tool to help you, you know, use AI to write better copy. But, you know, they, they build a community out of everybody that's using the tool. Uh, they, you know, create a movement in it. And then they're doing like inside the community, let's call it weekly education, when they host hmm. people from the community that are doing great stuff with the tool or something else that you know, they can turn to using the tool again and educating, educating, educating people so it can get spread around and they, you know, got get to involve other people that, you know, might not know about the tool, but they look mm -hmm. for something on YouTube. They come up, uh -huh, okay, that's how I get educated. Then again, I got stuck into the community. I ask questions over there. They are really active. People are active over there. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, instantly they start using using the tool again mm, okay yeah yeah so i mean i think um 
yeah, we're, we're, we're really, it's really clear that it's a waste of time to go build community uh, or set up, you know, podcasts and internet talk shows and make all this content and amplify it. Uh, uh, if you don't even have like a, a movement and a functional category uh, that, you, that, that you're focused on. So that, that's, uh, that's where I would start there with regard to the, to, you know, getting this relationship orbiting orbit going and developing that, you know, and building that, um, we, we want to do a few things. You're already doing them, right? We want to co-create the value with people who are aligned on the movement, right? Exactly. Um, they might end up being just collaborators, friends, but they can also be clients or team members eventually partners, whatever. Um, and then once we co-create value with those types of people, um, we need to nurture connection with those people and, and, and with the audience and between the audience, we really want to leverage this vehicle. Um, I'm, I'm channeling my friend Pablo Gonzalez now. Right. Uh, but, but we want to we want to leverage this vehicle of the internet talk show or the podcast um, as a way to to nurture more connection between people, and that brings up the sense of community, right? Um, another thing you're doing is 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 you're giving people you're you're giving people the stage. You're mm -hmm. giving me you're giving me the stage right now, and and you're making me feel appreciated and spe and special, uh, like I have a part in the movement, right? Um, and then once you've done that, it's all about magnifying that content that you've co-created. Um, the, 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 the difficult part um, for people, I think this is where the, the difficulty comes, is that you really need to collaborate in this part. Collaboration is the key. Because... Yeah. You, you yourself cannot be the movement. That's, <laughs> you know, not how it goes. And even early right even early you have to think about this whole process of co-creating the value nurturing the connection and then magnifying that that anchor content um you have to think about how we do all of this and free up time for ourselves for relationship building for one-on-one -on -one relationship building because people drown themselves in the amplification in the repurposing and the blah, 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 all these little things they're doing, right? And they drown their time that needs to be bought back. You need to buy back your time to be a real person. <laughs> so this is a problem because you we want to scale on, on community building, right? Let's say you have great intent. I want to build community. I want to build movement. I want to do, you know, a, a go-to community before I just throw all these products and services at the market. Um, but you can still fall into the to the trap, right? Of not leaning into the collaboration enough, and therefore you're not using leveraging relationship to create more time for yourself. So uh, entrepreneurs burn out when they try to scale because they don't yeah. have a process like this that's efficient. Yeah, it comes. It comes with the growth. Then you understand. Okay, I need. I need processes. Then you understand. Okay, I need somebody to assist me. Somebody to take over part of the the, the job that is not gonna get me to another level, but still needs yeah. to be done. Yeah. Like also, I, I'm in that position right now, so I'm recognizing mm -hmm. the things that are going. I ha I had the man next to me that is the same as I am, and I realized I need somebody who's a little bit different. You know who can do some things that I can't, so yeah. I can continue doing the things that I'm doing. And yeah, processes, exactly. you know, I I I, I always uh, I'm always against them. I mean, basic ones, yes, but you can go with that only if you have A players, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's the catch. That's the catch because they know what their job is, and you don't need mm -hmm. to overlook them. But how many A players are in the world? And can you get them? <laughs> I, I'm I, I'm on your side, so I like this too. I I, res, I tremendously respect systems and process and models, but uh, I lean the other way. I lean into capability and trust uh, and leadership. 
It's like if they if they if they are not doing something the way I want it done, that's my responsibility. Because I hired them, I led them. Something is misaligned, right? That I yeah. messed up maybe earlier on, right? Usually. Um but but it, but in any case, it, it really comes down to 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 this core set of collaborations that needs to be formed in the ecosystem. And you, if you're starting from scratch, let's say, you build that through that orbit. Over time, you build it through the orbit, and you start to set up these collaborations. Um, for me, uh, <laughs> I haven't. I we haven't even started. Uh, uh, doing a sort of show for, for, for my angle here. Uh, so I haven't even started relationship orbiting using a, a, a talk show or a podcast. <laughs> and, and just the purpose and the message has attracted the right relationships. Yes. Once we start orbiting, now we're starting to accelerate things, right? Um, so uh, I think, you know, it's important for everyone to realize that in the new world, you can solve bigger problems through collaboration because you have connection. You have the, the potential to build relationship. You just didn't have that potential in the 1950s the way you did now, you know? Um, and uh, basically what can happen is you, you, you are capable of building an ecosystem nowadays. Uh, this is now possible today and the ecosystem uh it, it will be built around that communal purpose and everyone will have their micro market functional category that contributes from every angle to that purpose and and grows the thing together we all lift each other up right um so i think the hardest part of this for people to accept to embrace is that we're moving from a competition-based economy to a collaboration-based economy. And that is a, a complete paradigm flip. Um, people look at me like I'm crazy when I, when, I, when I talk about stuff like this, you know? No, I saw, I saw the comment the other day and I was like, man, okay. I have no idea who stands behind behind the platforms, those kind of things. But what I do know that if you look at funky marketing and some other names over there that are, you know, like talking about demand jam, for example, you will think that we are all competitors, right? Exactly. But on the other hand, you know, we are throwing each other's uh, referrals. We are referring companies to each other. And uh, it's becoming... You know, something because as as we already mentioned, I cannot create the movement myself. Any company, any leader cannot do it. They can start it, but they need yeah. all the other names to come in. And it's perfectly right. okay to be, you know, you don't need to be on the forefront and to, to lead everything, but you need to go and catch that wave. Yes. That's, I think, the, the important part. And you make... You're going to make your unique contribution. Yes. You're earning your place at the table amongst the leadership, right? And we're all going to unify because what we've realized now is that <laughs> when we actually collaborate, there's too much demand to serve. So th there's the scarcity is melting away. If you, if you understand this, right? Um, so I, I, I think that most Right now, it's just going to be the early movers, you know, the, the early adopters, uh, really game changing uh, types of entrepreneurs. So my um, we're early. So my 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 qualifications right now are are, are less uh, firmographic and more psychographic. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, 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 the whole point of that go to community uh, uh, is that you start to get clear on the psychographics of movement commitment and uh, product uh, 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 product market fit is what they call it, right? But you start to get clear on the psychographics of that before you actually understand all the firmographics of like which company type and uh, this and that is going to be optimized, uh, you know, leadership structure, org structure, revenue amount, right? 
right now it's more like, no, there's companies and there's entrepreneurs that think th this way. And then there's entrepreneurs that think this way. They're a tiny minority. They're a tiny minority, but that's who we want to work with right now. We're not looking for followers. We're looking for leaders right now. It's the beginning. So. Well said. Well said. <laughs> I love that. We're not looking for the followers. We're looking for the leaders. Sounds, yeah. sounds great. The follow I mean, You don't need to. The followers just follow when they're ready. I mean, when they recognize you as, as a teacher, I'd say, as a leader in yeah. the other words, but I, I love the, way, the, the, the word teacher because, mm. you know, when people are starting to share your content, when they mm. start to, you know, to send you messages about you, to tag you and your company in their posts, then, you know, you're doing the right thing. And yes. I think when they recognize you as a teacher, that's the first step in, you know, in understanding that you can get on the journey to create a brand. Mm. There's still yeah. a long way to go. Uh, I, I'm still one of the, the people that thinks that brand needs time. Probably at least two years of persistency mm -hmm. on some things to be created. But, you know, yeah. you can get the feeling and you can understand if you're going in the right way or no. Yeah. Totally, totally. Yeah, I mean, and now we're getting into we've talked about the go to community. Uh, we, we've talked about the macro sort of problem here. Um, and we've also talked about uh, we've done the both ends, we've done like the micro motion of this co creation of value, nurturing the connection and magnifying that on social. Um, now I'm going to go in between those two, which is brand, we just talked about brand. Um, and, you know, brand, there's a lot of misunderstood words in, in business right now, uh, things where everyone's defining them differently. Uh, brand is one of those words. But for me, brand uh, has to be defined in a specific way in order for it to be a sustainable growth execution. Um, mm -hmm. For me, if I, I've defined it in two words, which is relational equity. Um, one-to-one -one relationships are part of that, uh, a, a certain type of reputation at scale is part of that, a connect, a feeling of unity between people, a sense of community is part of that, a movement, right? There's a whole bunch of layers to that cake of relational equity, which is why I like, I like that term. It's pretty general. Um, and you know, the idea of what we're talking about building brand is just to, to, have that relational equity overflow <laughs> over time. It spills over. Um, and I think that the key, there's a few things people are missing. People are missing. But I, I would I would say that I'm, I'm going to repeat myself here. <laughs> I'm going to repeat myself here. That's good. That's good. Uh, I'm always like when I'm doing like sort of a webinar or something like that, I'll always say to people like, I repeat a couple of things, a couple of times, just yes. in case you missed it for the first time. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So look, everyone, everyone is looking for time and money. We want more, more money and more time to do what we want to do, right? But what people are forgetting is that those two things are produced by purpose and relationship. The most impactful relationships come from a communal purpose, a shared purpose and values. Impactful relationships free your time to do what you're supposed to be doing, what you want to do, right? And they also produce money because they're capability collaborations going on. So we're, we're coming back to the idea of relationship and purpose being the source of all sustainable uh, abundance creation and growth essentially and that you know if you if you don't if you don't start with that as the core you don't have any leverage on what you're doing you're spinning your wheels the traction isn't there there's no friction in the ground right um so wh when we talk about brand let's get back to the word brand and this relational equity overflow right? You're starting with that purpose. Um, the next thing that you really need to have to create maximum traction on that relational equity 
is to have a system of intentional integrity. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we can say all the big blah, 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 purpose, you know, ah, yeah, yeah. Change the world. Right. But if you are, if you're advocating for strategies that you are not embracing, and we see this, we see this a fair amount where there's a conflict going on between the preach and the practice, um, what yeah, people are saying and what they're practicing. That's basically um, every, every marketing agency in the world. Okay. <laughs> just, well, just thank you. Narrow, thank narrow you. It Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you know more than me on that, but, but you know, that's the issue. So <laughs> after a bigger communal purpose, you need a system of like, these are our rules for ourself. This is how we do things because we want to evolve into one of our best case studies. This is what integrity is about. Yeah, that's right? so well said, like to, to involve into our best case study. That's yeah. so well Which is what said. you do. You definitely do this. You definitely oh, do like, that. Look, let me give you an example. Uh, like last mm, March, I was supposed to go and talk on a conference about something totally, totally else. Like, uh, I was supposed to talk about how we, uh, how I started growing company on LinkedIn, those kind of things. But, you know, they have some speakers that they invited before me. And, uh, you know, two ladies, all of them talking something related to the LinkedIn. So they told me you need to go and something else and talk about the things that I don't do. So I said, okay, unwillingly, but okay. Uh, but I told them, look, like those two ladies, they know a lot less, uh, you know, related compared to me about the things. Mm -hmm. And so today, the March to 2020, the conference is uh, being organized again. And they asked me, do you want to be a speaker to actually do mm -hmm. it? Because, you know, they uh, promoted me as the one who is dividing people. No idea. <laughs> no idea. That, like no pressure. You know, like the one who is dividing people, we're going to invite him. We're going to see what he's all about. You know, is he only about posting or results? And those kind of things. So uh. he said, okay, but we need to change the topic. And I said, didn't you uh, suggest the topic and everything? I said, no, I, I didn't. It was your idea. But listen to me. Like those two ladies, one worked with me as a client. The other mm. applied to, to work in, in my company. So, uh, just to put that out of the way, and my topic on the conference would be how uh, did we grow the company from uh, zero to 25K uh, MRR in 18 months. That's mm -hmm. going to be the topic. And if you want me to divide people and to show what I can do, here it is, because that's happened since the conference was supposed to be last year. So, in, in the year, that's what I have done. So, uh, you know, and that's how you turn into the case study. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, um, and this is, this becomes difficulty. I think, especially in the go to market, you know, um, like if you had a strategic narrative, <laughs> you have to be very careful with the strategic narrative because if exactly. you choose something that is something that's going to change pretty soon. You understand? So HubSpot, I agree, inbound people coming to you is going to stay, right? But that's what they got right. What they got wrong was the way that you make that happen mm -hmm. in terms of that's going to change rapidly, right? So they're still in the SEO, everything SEO, you know, like uh, we create great content and people who are searching for that content and have intent consume it and really like it, which makes perfect sense, right? And definitely has value, right? But their bigger narrative of inbound, you don't want to box inbound into this one strategy, right? You you would want, there's many inbound strategies, right? That, that create this. Um, especially, so, especially, you know, like today when people change and technology came on a totally different level. So it changed the world and it changed the narrative. Exactly. It changed the narrative. So let's get into a little bit, just um, you're reminding me uh, of the, in terms of narrative uh, work, what is a way that you can, you can kind of make sure that you're, you're defining a narrative that is for the long term. 
because it could be true and not be long term. Mm -hmm. That's possible. Um, you're, you might be catching a wave of some sort, but you're not seeing a, a long term a paradigm shift. So the way I do that is you have to ask yourself the, 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 the connectivity question. All game changing narratives that last at the point we are now all trace their lineage back to this one single question, which is as connection accelerates, does this strategy or approach get stronger or weaker? This is the long-term uh, category design narrative question, movement question that people need to ask themselves to, to see if, are, are we, are we going to have to like rework this thing in five, 10 years? Right. Or is this just like our game and we're going to fight till the death, right? I want to be on the fight till the death, uh, 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 mindset. Um, so to get there, you have to be, you have to sell yourself intellectually and, emo and emotionally, you're usually sold emotionally already, but intellectually on, on why does this only get better? Why are we at the weakest moment of this thing? And it's still the must go option, right? Um, and it's, it's getting people, there's no escape option. There's no escape option. Like you cannot escape this change in the world, right? Uh, and, and that's what we have to make clear to people. So for me, if you come back to sustainable growth, let's just ask the question, right? Why, why is sustainable growth necessary? Like why is a mindset shift necessary? Well, look at, look at the world's business churn rate. Look at the percentage of businesses that churn, uh, how long they last and how sustainably they grow. And I mean, we are, we are, we're in a, we're in a disaster. You know, the small businesses, they don't grow sustainably and more and more money is being concentrated with, you know, who, right. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, that, 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 <laughs> now it sounds, sounds like, you know, like <laughs> philosophy, when we have COVID, when we have everything, no, it's like, yeah. it's like Harry Potter. It's like Harry Potter right now. Um, <laughs> you know, who, but <laughs> the, them who shall not be named. Right. Um, so, so the idea is like, we need a complete bottom up transformation. Daddy is not coming to save us. You understand? We have to save each other through this collaborative, uh, everyone rises together alignment around your communal purpose and movement. All right. Um, so yeah, we're, 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 we're in, we're in a very, 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 tense situation with regard to economic abundance um the future of economic abundance and so that's what i'm that's that's the purpose that i'm a hundred percent focused on oh man seems like we are getting into the interesting future yesterday i told that regarding to technology now i'm saying that regarding to the economy so yes. it's obviously getting uh, all kind of different approaches around us and hmm. go on with with the Wi-Fi, but we should be back. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was, it was my Wi-Fi at this moment, yeah, but I think now it's okay. No worries. No, we're good. Yeah, sometimes it's happen. Usually, yeah. So, it don't, so just, but, just, yeah. just, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay, good. Yeah. So, so, um, you know, just with regard to this, this problem is that you know businesses don't understand uh, relational equity build. They don't see that as the goal, right? Uh, and, and so they don't, they don't build relational equity. They don't build brand. They're not amplifying anything. They're playing small is what's happening across the board. Pretty much. Uh, uh they're playing by the narrative they've been given. Um, 
you were meant to fulfill some sort of little functional product or service category. And that's really all you're, you're supposed to be doing. Um, so when it comes to my work with, with my friend Amber uh, and Amplifyology, our goal is to create a, 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 an entrepreneurial mindset shift where businesses start to build true momentum at scale from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I say true momentum, there's a reason why I say true. And that's because there's a lot of fake momentum going on in the marketplace right now. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff where people are, you know, they're, they're just announcing fundraises and they're paying for PR and this thing and that thing. And they, they, it's a, it's a whole scheme, right? But true momentum, you cannot fake true momentum. It, the signs are obvious and, and the two signs are going to be no community movement, fake momentum, no community movement and high relationship churn. These are the signs of fake momentum, even in Amazon. Even in Amazon is faking momentum because their employee churn rates are horrific, right? Which means they are spending tons of energy to dominate. They're not doing it in a really super efficient way, actually. Mm -hmm. They are working it's hard. Easy. It's not easy. It's it not doesn't easy. Come naturally. Exactly. Yeah. Lucrative, but it's not easy at all. Very difficult. And so in terms of sustainability, everybody has to win. Everybody has to win. That's the definition of sustainability is when everyone's winning. When everyone's winning, it just keeps going. The reason why businesses fall apart is because somebody's losing. Somebody in the ecosystem is losing. I don't know who it is, depending on the situation. Um, usually multiple parties. Usually there's a there's a match going on, uh, a, a reflection going on some way of the internal team's capability, the, the, the kind of positioning that you have as the business, and then what's coming in, right? Um, and what's staying. So... For, for me, you know, I think what is really important, I'm going to repeat again, what's really important for people to remember is that you're going to hear lots of, you know, tactics, which is great. Uh, you know, produce a talk show, produce a podcast, create great content, you know, uh, magnify that on social, engage with people, so on and so forth, build relationships. But um, if you don't have the gateway, you need the gateway. You need the gateway. And the gateway, like we said, is that bigger purpose and a system of integrity. So people are like, oh, wow. Yeah, like this person aligns with my purpose. I don't care like how many followers do they have, who knows them. I care nothing about it all of a sudden. I'm like, oh, this person actually could be a contributor and they represent a human person who has commitment. Like there's something amazing about that, you know, that I don't see much. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm going to do now something which is kind of interesting and I didn't think of doing it, but you reminded me because like what you are saying is kind of something that uh, Michael Phillips also mentioned in the podcast and him and I have the same background in talking and learning and practicing permaculture mm -hmm. as well. So it's again, the, the whole system. And like when I look at, uh, you know, I don't know if, uh, yeah, my tattoo. Oh, so nice. there, there, there's a mountain. So, and there are taller trees. There's, uh, you know, smaller uh, plants. There's yeah. a wolf, there are a deer, all yeah. kind of things. And they all support each other. And that's what mm. makes the mountain ecosystem mm. lives. So beautiful. Unless people come. <laughs> Yeah, but that, that's something that's something else. But uh, you know, that's also the way to look at the things. We don't need to look at them from just you know pure business perspective. We can look yeah. at it from life perspective and basically just you know copy that system into our business and what we're doing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I think um, I think there's a struggle going on because the universe. Uh, it needed survival of the fittest competition to build the engine for the age of collaboration. You understand? 
competition is what got us to is the strategic narrative we played up until this point as, as humans to get us to this state of physical being and mental capacity and so in, and structure culture right but now that we've built all that and the connectivity is all of a sudden exploding the flip happens right yes that's hard that's hard for people because that that um that gorilla instinct is just like still in us you know we're fresh it's, we're not very far removed it's early you know we had literally you know uh 150 years ago america was a slave economy mm -hmm. 150 years ago america was a slave economy and look where we are now so i have empathy for people's slowness because we're going so fast right um i'm we're going from detain depreciate and destroy to retain appreciate and multiply these are these are the opposites of the spectrum retain appreciate multiply not detain depreciate and destroy uh and uh yeah so i think that there's somewhat of a uh another shift that we're seeing is like if i could put that into a word it's like gratitude and nurturing is becoming more powerful than dominance and ambition and acquisition in a sense uh, uh uh so gratitude and nurturing appreciating the value of what you already have and whom you already serve appreciating the value of your community uh appreciation is going to be a far more effective an impactful strategy than acquisition based growth where you're trying to acquire most of your growth. Yeah. And, you know, uh, to make it more simple, I'm coming back right. to, uh, you know, to the one thing that, you know, a guy that everybody now seems to laugh on Gary V because he talks about a lot of different stuff, entrepreneurial, discount, but Like in 2015, he said the most important thing is to be kind and appreciate other people. And you know, you know what? Like a couple of days ago, uh, I think DG posted posted a photo when there's a uh, lots of marketing leaders on Twitter, and like one row is five bucks, uh, five dollars. Uh, second row is four, then three, two, one. Like you have you have i don't know ten dollars which combination are you going to make and mm. there are people saying like any that doesn't include gary v and uh, and then like you see gary v in the co in the comment section answering like hey i don't know marta let's say <laughs> i'm sorry that, that, that you think like this but i'm gonna do my best And I'm gonna make sure that <laughs> in time you change your opinion about me. Like, and, 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 that, and that's it. That, that's oh, how you build man. a relationship. That's how you go out. <laughs> and you know, that's how you do it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm, for me, right? Like nobody's perfect in this world. So I don't like to get, I don't like to, you know, put other people down like that or, you know, yeah, crap on sure. Gary V. like. Honestly, Gary V knows what he's doing amazingly well. And anyone who doesn't think so, they don't know what they're doing. That's mm -hmm. what I think. I think that they don't know what they're doing and they're kind of jealous that he like knows what he's doing, you know? Um, like you're just seeing the, the, the problem with scale with Gary V. You understand? Like once you get to a certain scale, uh, <laughs> You, the human power isn't there to create that sense of integrity and, and relationship behind it. So that's what I'd be aware of is just like scale, right? Uh, it, 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 you know, there, there's a, there's a healthy scale, I think, where you can kind of build it more sustainably potentially. Right? Yeah. I mean, scaling isn't easy, however you do it, but you know what you can do, you, you can learn from similar companies mm. or you can, you, in a in a better way like going back to drift again what david mm -hmm. cancel did he was at the hub spot 
So he, he solved the problems over there. And when he got to the same problems with Drift, he knew how to address them. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, you know, you can, so you can see what others are doing. You can learn from your own experience. Mm-hmm. But the most important thing is you need to try. Sometimes you cannot do it, at least mm-hmm. that I know. Like, uh, you know, you can learn to be responsible just for the things that you can influence. Because yeah. sometimes it can get out of the hands, but not to go crazy and to hold things tight. You need to just, you know, take it easy and do what you can do at the specific moment in time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But having in mind the goal and the focus. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. No, we have some people uh, saying hi. Oh. We have Paul, we have Sillard, we have Venkatesh. So uh, people are reacting in the comments. LinkedIn, some on, some on Facebook. We are streaming on multiple platforms. Uh, but the most important thing is... Paul. I see Paul. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the most important thing that I want to say is uh, that... My man, I think this was one of the best episodes of the show from the start. Oh, thank you. I appreciate so, that. Uh, that was a great combo. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Um, I'm, uh, I'm super... Is there is there one thing that we forgot to talk about or the one thing that you want to say for the end? Yeah, I mean, we could we could do we could do a series of these on, on this. There's there's Definitely. lots to talk about. Um, you know, we we could we could just touch on um, just kind of like uh, the way that companies are the operations a little bit. Something we could touch on if you want, um, kind of measurement metrics, operations. The second, the latter half of those a mm-hmm. little bit more. Um, so for for you know for me, um, I I've never worked in a marketing organization. Uh, I come from small business. Uh, I come from you know, cafes, bakeries, farmers markets, catering, um, you, you, you name it, right? Uh, these like physical locations, uh, face-to-face stuff. And uh, I had a journey of frustration that led me here from that. But it's hard for people to understand why I'm talking about some of these things when I have never worked in a marketing organization before. And, and that, that can be difficult for people. But it turns out that in, in the time period we're in, uh, you actually uh, have a situation where systems are being broken. The universe is breaking the systems, okay? And so there is an opportunity for um, outsiders who understand marketing. I understand the fundamentals of marketing and what marketing is all about and what good marketing is and what bad marketing is. Uh, to look at this thing and I'm in the community. I'm sitting in the community in all the rooms with all these marketers and all these organizations, CMOs, VPs, everybody, right? And I listen and I figure out what's going on. You understand? And I say, oh, wow, this is really complicated. You guys really make things complicated, don't you? Um, And so my operations philosophy sort of evolved out of that. And I was like, God, there's gotta be something more sustainable. You know, this, this, complex uh, uh, orchestration is, is the word that I would use. Orchestration between marketing, sales, and customer success. Um, and obviously, you have other teams in there too. I consider product under customer success. Mm-hmm. You can group these things the way, the way you want to group them, right? But I find that um, the grouping of three, the grouping of three main RevOps functions uh, is creating a massive imbalance. And the reason is because sales is, uh, is, in, is, is inflated in a sense. It's, um, it doesn't actually merit a, a department uh, in the new world. Uh, it merits people with skills for consulting and subject matter expertise. But it's <laughs> not good. selling. S- sounds good, it's yeah. Just, right? So the peop- people are having to get over this. Um, and it's painful, you know, it's painful to realize that like the way we were doing things, isn't the best way to do things and we have to change. Um, so for me, I, I believe that sales will, will melt 
into, first of all, it will shrink mm -hmm. and then it will melt. Part of it will go into marketing. Part of it will go into customer success. Uh, the AE will probably flow towards customer success. The SDR uh, will flow towards marketing. To marketing, yeah. Yes. And the whole point is that right now we have our manpower, our relationship power, selling crap. That's why they need to be in marketing. That's why they need to be in customer success. What we do is we use that connectivity. We use that movement building. Uh, the the SDR um, might be doing a mix of, of uh, uh, you know, community building, uh, kind of narrative work, community building, down to some uh, ABM, helping specific people in the community, companies, uh, 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 achieve certain things, right? Um, and then the AE is like the most trusted seller because they stay with the client from beginning all the way to end through their whole lifetime. No one else sells you on anything ever. And, and, and this person doesn't even sell you. They didn't have to in the beginning. But the point is you have a real relationship with that person who is the person who you say you talk about the money with really, you know, um, so to me, the basic premise is that uh, marketing's real function is to eliminate the need for selling. Totally agree. So people right now are saying that it's 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 actually to make selling easier. And now I go extreme. I say it's its objective is to eliminate the need for selling. It does make selling easier. But the objective is to eliminate the need because why would we want to have to sell when we could use all that manpower for relationship building? So what we get is a situation where we need to cut one of those departments and have a, a two department marriage, right? Perfectly aligned. Uh, the, there I, is, I, there I, is, there is one thing, uh, that, you know, a couple of episodes, I think Michael mentioned that, you know, that marketing and sales with customer success can be renamed to opportunity department that that also goes go. very, very well yes. with what you're saying yes the acquisition trap the acquisition trap right so the the the, the problem uh sa sales is the problem <laughs> because sales uh, dominates weak marketing departments and and uh you know organizations that don't really value marketing the sales dominates them and they just become a, a servant of sales right um sales and customer success are, are, are um directly in conflict at most organizations um because customer success wants the existing people to succeed that's their objective and sales objective is to get as many new customers as possible. This breaks. Um, so what you're seeing is that a, a, a three person marriage is very difficult because one of the parties usually has a different differing set of values and they create a massive conflict. In the exactly, relationship exactly what we were saying for outside of the company is the same inside the company exactly exactly um so i believe the future we will we will have this efficient sustainable growth ops not this com complicated rev ops orchestration you know now there's obviously a spectrum of like how many you know uh sales people do you have at your company right that can vary but the basic structure and the alignment and the objectives will cease to be sales or acquisition as an objective because acquisition is an unsustainable objective, but it's a sustainable byproduct of relationship. Objectives versus byproducts is the difficulty we are having right now. When you make the wrong thing your objective, you don't get what you want. When you make the right thing your objective, you get what you want and more.
right? So, you know, Pablo is all about relationship driven growth, relationship marketing, right? Paul's about community driven business. We can keep going on and on here, but the core of all of this is that all sustainable growth happens as a byproduct of impactful relationships. There is no escaping that, you know? So if everybody thinks they're going to advertise their way to do this and that and get this, raise this money and blah, 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 in the new world, no, 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 no. The connection is going to be too much, too much. The relationship feedback loop is going to expose you almost instantaneously. And by the same token, if you come at it with the right intent, with impact and movement and purpose, and integrity, the relationship feedback loop will expose you. You will be exposed either way, basically, is what I'm trying to say, right? Yeah, uh, I like this for the end to kind of threaten the people what will happen. Because we didn't, we didn't say, talk about the, the narrative. We didn't say that we need to name what's going to happen and, you know, who's, who is the one who's going to end up badly if they don't follow what exactly. you are bringing to the table because uh, exactly. that that's also important man this was great uh and we should we should do it a couple of couple of times more until the end of the year absolutely there, there's so many things going on and there will be things going on i'm learning so, we're learning you know so it's yeah good. definitely and and what you what you just just said like i'm realizing when we are doing, uh, you know, companies reach out to us to do demand through advertising, those kind of things, like they don't come again with the mindset of getting the leads. They are coming with the mindset, use advertising to educate and create relationship with the audience. And I'm very happy that I'm seeing this. You know, it happened yeah. last week. So uh, I'm very happy that I'm seeing that companies are realizing that. So... Basically, uh, if I can have, uh, you know, one advice for the people to take out of this is, you know, uh, know your narrative, know what you want to do, try out, see if people are actually reacting to it, not your friends and family, but relevant people that can buy your product or your service. And exactly. then, you know, if you know that, just, uh, you know, start creating relationships with those people and it will take you to other people like them and slowly, slowly it will build. And until you reach the other phase, we will do another event and talk more about those things. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Many, many events to come, brother. Yeah, definitely. Man, tell, uh, tell me and people listening where they can find you, what you're preaching about, more information about things. Um, yeah, so, so I'm, I'm on LinkedIn all the time. Uh, if you want to get in contact with me, that's the best place. Um, just send me, send me a DM, uh, send a, send a, con a connect. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, we're, we're always happy to, I have an a, I have ABM too. So it's not like I just charge for everything. So I do some of these things, helping people with creating models and the narrative and stuff, just as my account based marketing, whether they buy from me ever or not. Right. So if you're, if you guys are, you know, if you're a game changer, <laughs> if you're a game changing entrepreneur who wants to actually drive movement, um, yeah, shoot me a message and, 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 and let's talk and let's, and let's, uh, let's get you moving a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I advise you to connect, to connect with Kalim, uh, even just, you know, to interact with the comments in the posts, you can get a lot of value because he's a guy who's sharing things and not, uh, as you, as you saw, not holding back things. So that's something that I always, that I always value. You know, I just said that people see me as somebody who's polarizing. Well, if you, if you speak the things as they are, you polarize people and that's something you need to go with. Yeah. So guys, uh, thank you for being with us. Kalim, thank you for being an awesome guest. Uh, everybody. Keep it funky and see you on the next episode. See you guys.